Hey, what is going on, you weak Weedles? Um, just got back from Dallas Regionals. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at taking a look at not only the deck I played, um, but the deck the whole squad played, um, and that Caleb Gettemir managed to take to second place. Now I didn't have such a great run. Did manage to see Caleb get to the finals with this list. Um, so yeah, thought I'd go go ahead and come out because the deck did, at least did decently well. I thought I'd go ahead and come at you guys with a. Uh, I did pretty well. Second place is pretty good. Uh, come at you with a go ahead. Go ahead and come at you guys with a deck profile video. I'm stumbling over my words a little bit here. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So it is Zoro Toad. I'm sure you guys have played around with the list similar. You've seen the deck before. It did win the last two expanded regionals before Dallas regionals. Um, so I'm sure you've seen something similar. But let's go ahead and get right into it. And I'll talk about the tech cards we chose to play and the reasoning for them. All right. So we've got an Oranguru. Which we use, which which is used in some matchups to pretty much lock up the whole game. Um, control mirrors, you use Oranguru a lot. Um, really depends. Uh, in, in any matchup, you can really use the Oranguru, but like control matchups specifically, or something like a Drampa Garb, anything with Trash Lance, really use Oranguru a lot. Most of the matchups, you almost exclusively attack with Toad. Um, but yeah, in control matchups, this is where the Oranguru shines. And then situationally, in other matchups where either you get really low on resources, or you get your opponent low enough on resources, that all you have to do is get back resources to make sure you can just close out the game. I uh, got the 4 4 Zork. It is the draw engine of the deck for Zerua 4 Zork. Make sure you use, if you can, if you have access to them, play the Paralyzing Gaze Zerua. It's worth it. Um, it's won me multiple games in Expanded using the having access to the Paralyzing Gaze Zerua. So make sure if you have access to them, you play them. Uh, yeah, so 4 4 Zork line. Just trying to be consistent about setting up our draw engine and being consistent throughout the whole game. One pseudo Wudo. Um, here for the Skyfield decks um, as well. Specifically now that uh, Archie's is now Archie Wales. Um, specifically actually very good in this matchup. Because um, you can set up a play where you... <clears throat> the play that you set up in the, the Archie's Wales matchup. Which a lot of people thought... Um, well, I was told a lot of people think that it's a bad matchup for this deck. It's actually favored for this deck. Um, the strategy you pull off and it combos with playing three counter catcher account that we had played one at in the at Portland and Anaheim regionals is um, you counter catch up to Blastoise, knock it out with Quaking Punch, they knock out your Toad, and then you either if they have four bench Pokemon, you put Sudowoodo in play, and then you go Legendary Ascent and Cold Crush remove all the energy. And now their bench is locked to four. You're not going to kill their active whale. And they can't get another Archie's for the Blastoise in play. You can also parallel city them to three um, and then do the same thing if they only have three bench Pokemon. Because if you put that on the Pseudo Widow, even if they have a way with no energy in the active, they could still go Archie's. Um, so that's the uh, the game plan in that matchup. That's why there's the three counter catcher. The heavier counter catcher count. It's also pretty good against Zoro Garb. Um, other matchups, not quite so good. The counter catchers aren't. Uh, they're still good. They're good. They're good overall, but. Main reason for us playing the three counter catcher at this event specifically was for the Archie's Whale matchup. You want to be, as soon as they take a knockout with the Whale, you want to be counter catcher quaking punching the Blastoise, knock out eventually through quaking punch, and then you limit their bench, lock up their bench with Sudowoodo or Parallel City, and then cold crush away all the energy off the Whale Lord, and then they just can't Archie's again and get more energy in play. Um, so that's the reasoning behind three counter catcher. That's also where Sudowoodo shines as well. Besides the Skyfield matchups, is that matchup. Besides that, the Sudowoodo doesn't see much play. Very, very situationally, you might want to put it in play to like limit your opponent's bench so you know they can't put down a lightly next turn or something. Uh, when execute, we need like the infinite resource of the egg to make sure we have enough stuff to be able to constantly trade and also use Plumeria and Ultra Ball stuff like that. Only one egg. We don't have access to it for through Battle Compressor. Um, but yeah, you'll eventually find it. Eventually, put it to use. Get Lost, Giraffe, one of the just kind of like, in my opinion, the best cards in Expanded. People play such low counts of stuff because of stuff like Via Seeker or, I don't know. We have so many ways to get what we need back in Expanded. The Giraffe is just so good. My favorite play with Giraffe is literally Guzma sent Giraffe into my active and then Get Lost their Guzmas, meaning they can no longer, uh, no, sometimes no longer use Guzma for the rest of the game and they have to somehow find a different way to retreat their active every single time. Um, and then once you just start uh, quaking punching them they're limited to literally uh having to retreat through energy um but yeah get lost get rid of guzma is literally my favorite play in expanded in my favorite play to pull off in expanded right now uh through type of lately just trying to be consistent we play a lot of one of supporters in this deck um so we just want to be consistent find them use them type of Layla gx uh articuno gx uh basically one matchups specifically very good in the whale lord matchup or blastoise whale lord 
um, or stuff like against Buzzwool. Any matchup where they play a lot of energy and you just kind of need to reset their energy in play, that's what the Articuno is there for. Specifically very good against, the most popular matchup it's very good against is Whale Lord, Blastoise, uh, Cold Crush the Whale Lord, remove eight energy, or however many they put on there, maybe it's just like five or six, whatever. Get rid of all of them um, and make it tough for them to attack on their next turn. Three Seismitoad, EX, the main attacker in the deck, um, and although some games you might only use like one Seismitoad, it's kind of awkward to find it, and that's why uh, we're continuing to play such a heavy count of it. It's kind of awkward to find early on. Um, you usually want to try and get as many Zerus as possible through Bridget and Fan Club. And you don't really want to spend uh, time using like a Fan Club, like if you Fan Club turn one, you don't want to find Zerua. Seismitoad, you ideally want to find two Zerua, so playing the heavy Toad count means you can just find it more easily um, and then go from there. Uh, three Counter Catcher already went over one of the major uses of it, um, but really, it it's kind of weird the evolution of the deck that has gone through with our, our group. You know, at uh, Portland and Anaheim, we played one Counter Catcher um, and it's gone up to three. I got almost no use out of this card in Portland. I've got a ton of use out of it in Anaheim, and then I've got playing three of them, you're going to get a ton out of use out of it. Even though I didn't play the full nine rounds, I did end up dropping after round uh, seven or eight. Uh, the counter catcher was super good um yeah loved it it's great it does its job very well specifically very good against blastoise which unfortunately i didn't play against but yeah uh wish i had played against more of the blastoise matchup but blastoise deck uh one dowsing machine we kind of just want as many of everything as possible we want options to go down different lines of play as extensively as possible so the dowsing machine does that very easily you can get access to another supporter uh, maybe you want to use a second enhanced hammer counter catcher four times in a row whatever it might be that's what the dazzling machine is there for to extend the lines of play down every line of play as much as possible through it uh, one enhanced hammer this is a card i wish we had played a second of and it's one of the cards we had talked about trying to include a second one of weren't able to find, find the space for it the space for it really went to the third counter catcher which i think was probably uh, just as good really would have liked to have a second enhanced hammer though you really get a lot of value out of using an enhanced hammer uh in this deck in certain matchups yeah so kind of wanted a second enhanced hammer but one was one was sufficient um i never really i don't think playing a second one would have won me any more games than i than i did so ended up working out in the end uh one field blower another card i would have liked two of but the zorgar matchup is already so good and it's really the only matchup you need field blower against like as much as possible that um one's fine and it gets the job done it can be a little sketchy and sometimes you'll lose games against stuff like zoro garb just because you can never remove their float stone and you don't get access to enough cards because you don't have access to trade but um yeah, like i said the matchup is so favored that just get your teeth and get through it i guess with the one field blower is the best way i can put it uh one stretcher we need this the biggest thing about this is just like uh allows you to trade stuff more freely uh, especially when you can't find your egg also i mean one of the major reasons you play it is so you can orangaroo loop um Resource management, make sure the stretchers in your deck, they KO your Orangaroo, you stretch it for a pack. So yeah, one of the major uses out of the rest of your stretcher is to make sure you can Orangaroo loop. I uh, got four Ultra Ball, consistency, four Via Seeker, consistency, just trying to use, uh, have as many options as possible for different lines of play. One Parallel City, one Silent Lab. Uh, did not play the Rough this time just because we didn't expect Trev to be anywhere at all. And it really wasn't like Trev. Um, I don't even know if any made day two. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't make day two myself, so I didn't see them there. Um, I don't think it had a great showing. Yeah, and that's really the only matchup that Rough Seas is super good against. It's okay against uh, Buzzwool, but not as like great. It's okay. Um, but yeah, when we when we know Trev is just like a bad play, we don't think anyone's going to play it. And we know uh, Buzzwool is uh, a okay play, but we know one of the most popular decks, Wales, just destroys it. We, it's not really worth teching for those matchups. Um, sure, you might hit them, and there's probably going to be a decent amount of them still played combined between the two of them, but if it's, the matchup isn't just an auto loss, there's really no point in teching for them. Much Would much rather play the third counter catcher for the Wales matchup instead, which is what we went with. Uh, one Ace Arola, you need to heal sometimes, not all the time. You're, like, like your opponent can draw five prizes. If they don't win the game, they don't win the game. One Bridget, uh, one Fan Club, just the early game consistency for setting up our Pokemon. Uh, the reason it's a 1-1 one -one split is it's nice to bridge it for triples or and you'd rather do that a majority of the time. But sometimes if you know you need a toad early on, got the fan club there for one Zoro, one toad. Or whatever you might need. Sometimes a lot of times I like grab like if I open the raw fan club, I'll get like sometimes get a Lele plus a Zoro, a Lele plus a Toad. So it's nice to have the option of the fan club over the bridge on the turn. One Chorus, one of the three draw supporters, and Sigmar Chorus. 
situational depending on what the board state's like and which one you need have three different draw supporters uh fava one of the primary uh win conditions against zoro garb actually now um you don't necessarily need it all the time but yeah simply fobbing away four dces is pretty good against a couple decks in the current format vespa queen uh zorark uh those might be the only two but they're pretty popular and <laughs> they were pretty popular at dallas so yeah one of Faba gets the job done. You don't really need more than one. You just need to make sure it's not prized, which we do have Gladion for. Like I said, a lot of one ofs in this list and a lot of important one ofs, depending on the situation, depending on the matchup, the Arcuno, the Giraffe, the Oranguru, all the supporters, the Field Blower, the Enhanced Stammer, uh, the Stretcher, uh, the two one of Stadiums, the one of Floatstone. Uh, so <laughs> Gladion's there to help us out uh, and make sure we have access to what we need when we need it uh one guzma we have three counter catcher and only sometimes need the guzma depending on the situations yeah one of guzma only one of don't really need more than that uh, like i said we do have the three counter catcher so our gust we're not short in gust effects by any means and our opponents are usually drawing their first prizes uh one hue this is a new addition uh from the portland and anaheim lists um basically it's a way to kind of speed up the game um specifically teched in um to help us beat zorark Garbodor that plays Ranger because we actually found that that matchup to be pretty unfavored um, if they do play the Ranger um, however if we have Hugh they don't have enough time to fully set up all their Ranger combos um, or enough Ranger combos to win the game before we just Hugh them once or twice and they lose too many cards to actually be able to win the game at all anymore so that's the initial reason why we included Hugh uh, I found it to be super useful overall. Um, it can act as a fourth draw supporter, kind of, not really. It's not super consistent about doing that, but it's possible to use it as a fourth draw supporter. Um, so yeah, that's the reason the hues there. It kind of, it kind of can speed up any matchup in any game because at some point when you're sitting there going like draw a quaking punch, your opponent is just going draw a pass. Um, you know, if their hand size gets too big, uh, you can reset your hand with like a chorus. Or maybe your hand has just stayed small enough to be able to just go, Hugh, you discard a bunch of cards. I either discard a couple cards or I draw up a couple cards. Um, against Zoro Garb, specifically, their hand gets huge. And when they're sitting there trying to set up a combo for Ranger, their hand gets really big because they're sitting there waiting to finally hit all the pieces they need. And then you Hugh them and then they just don't. Sure, maybe they have enough pieces in that hand to pull off the Ranger combo, but they don't have enough cards to actually finish the game at that point. Um, also good against other like control slash stall decks. So yeah, he was cool, really good. Uh, two Lusamine, endless, endless of whatever we want as far as uh, stadiums and supporters go. Can't run out of resources. Um, so if it comes down to it and they just can't attack anymore, um, you running out of cards isn't really a thing. You'll always be able to set up some kind of chain with Lusamine to actually just win the game. Um, your opponent can't kind of uh, make it hard for you to win the game. They can't really make it that hard for you to win the game at the end of the game. You'll just eventually win with Lusamine. Uh, one enemy already went over this. A comeback draw supporter, but a draw supporter overall anyways. Uh, only one Plumeria this time. The past two we have played in Anaheim and Portland. We played two Plumeria. Uh, cut back on that. Um, the really good match, the matchup that's really good against, in my opinion, was like Buzzwell and Trev, which I just went over. Like, we're not trying to beat those matchups. Um, all the other matchups, it's just not that great against, against like the Zorark decks. Bob is better against Whale Lord. I already went over the, the way you try and beat Whale Lord. Plum we, another win condition we had come up with was just like, um, you lock the Blastoise in the active, and you can also just Plumeri the energy of, off the Whale, which is still a viable strategy, but generally the other way is a little bit better. A little bit more consistent in my opinion, but yeah, you can go through the pl Plumeri route, but Plumeri was just, we found like the matchups we were using it a lot against just weren't really, really there anymore. The specifically Trevenant, I found, I used to find a lot of use out of the Plumerias, um, but with uh, us expecting a very little Trev, which there was, I don't even think I saw a Trevenant uh in all the rounds i played either city playing against me i definitely didn't see any but sitting next to me i don't think i saw a single trevenant um so yeah plumeria just felt unnecessary and that's why we went down to one fan club went over that sycamore went over that team rockets handiwork you just kind of want a win condition uh that allows you to win the game a little bit faster than maybe um you need to you don't actually need this card to win games but uh sometimes you need to close out a game sometimes maybe they donk you in a game and then you win a game two and in game three you just need uh to try and win as fast as possible that's what team rocket's handiwork is there for uh skull grunt gives us a lot of control over our opponent's hand they can't just sit there and draw pass forever we will eventually skull grunt them take away the energy and it's another way to kind of shut down combos they're building up towards same with hugh but sometimes our hand isn't super big so then team skull grunt just works a little bit better uh to fighting fury belt just want to make our toads tanky make it so that uh, you know may the main thing is zork with a skyfield and a choice man just can't one shot toad um besides that 
Let's make them more tanky. Every matchup is good just to have your toad be a little bit tankier. Um, protecting your pseudo wudu can also be nice. Uh, putting it on giraffe against Vespa Queen is really good. Putting it on a Rangaroo in like a Drampa Guard matchup is really good. Any matchup, I mean, any matchup, any of these Pokemon, you can be like, well, I just want this to maybe potentially live a little bit longer. Let's put a Fighting Fury Belt on it. Anything besides the Zorix, I guess. Um, so that's what the Fighting Fury Belts are there for. One Float Stone. Better to have some mobility than none besides something like the Guzma to move, or the Guzma or Acerola to move stuff around. So having the item mobility is just nice to be able to move something around. Um, yeah. Uh, 40C, we're trying to Quaking Punch. Two Water Energy to play around. Stuff like getting Fabad out of the game or anything like that. Um, give it, Specifically give ourselves more control in the uh, control slash stall matchups. Um, we don't want to be able to just get Fabad four times and then lose the game. They have two waters. It makes it really awkward for them to actually ever run us out of energy. So yeah, we have the two waters there on top of the 4DC. Um, also, the only reason we can cold crush is the water energy. Uh, but if you cut the Articuno... You could, I could definitely see going down to 40 CE or going with a different type. Maybe you just play Psychic at that point to use Tabu Cure. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's the list we ran. In I personally ran. The rest of the squad did. Caleb managed to get second place in at Dallas Regionals. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's something I didn't cover uh, either at all or thoroughly enough, go go ahead and ask in the comment sections down below. Uh, if you're wondering why we played a specific card or a specific strategy for a matchup, maybe even if you're curious about, go ahead and ask in the comment section down below. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you enjoy the content, subscribe. Leave your thoughts, like I just said, in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out my Twitch live stream and check out my social medias. Links for those in the description below. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.